everyone. Last time, we began the story of Tyrande, talking about her origins as novice priestess of Alun, the war of the ancients, becoming the high priestess of their sisterhoods, and leading their people into a bright and uncertain future. While Tyrande led their people, Melfurion guided new recruits in the way of druidism. This meant that they often took very long naps, and this aloofness frustrated Tyrann and her sentinels, though they often sought the druids to help safeguard their lands against threats like the Seder or leftover demons, few of Melfurion's followers were ever awake to answer the call. You might imagine that they would put quite a bit of strain on their relationship, yet Tyrande described it as Ah, Melfurion, my beloved. For a hundred, hundred years he slept beneath Moonglade. Whenever I was plagued with doubt, I would descend into his barrow. I watched over him as he slept. Even in slumber, his presence calmed me. I left my fears below the earth and emerged, ready to lead my people. Have you ever loved as I have? And while the Night Elves rebuilt, the scars of the War of the Ancients had definitely left their impact. Illidan warned them all that the Legion would return one day, and while it did take a few millennia to happen, he would be proven right. Archimond was summoned back onto the world, and he set his sights on that second well, which was hidden beneath Nordrasil. Some of his forces were sent on ahead, forces like the Pit Lord Manoroth. They were tossed with weakening the forest defenses. Most of all, the pesky wild god Cenarius that had caused them so much trouble in the War of the Ancients. To make that happen, Manoroth left behind some of his demonic blood. A temptation of power that Gromar's Hellskim and his Warsong orcs were unable to resist. When they made war in the forest, stole from the woodlands without asking, and felling trees with reckless abandon, the sentinels, obviously they fought back. They were as deadly as any foe that the orcs had faced. But it didn't frighten Grum and his warriors, rather it excited them. Still, the orcs were greatly outmatched, especially when Scenarius showed up. That's when they decided to drink demonic blood again, grabbing the power to strike down the demigod, but also chaining themselves firmly back into the hands of the Legion. While Frau and Jaina would ultimately be able to save Gromash, and Gromash in turn struck down Manoroth, which liberated their people from the blood curse. The damage it was already done. At the moment of Sonaris' death, the wilds around Hyjal darkened and trembled. Dryads, chimeras, treants, and other fake creatures, they retreated in horror. Though some would return to aid the night elves, many would remain in hiding for the duration of the war. Their primal strength was greatly diminished, and so the time to invade Kalimdor had come. The undead are tireless. There's no way to outrun them. You see, Lord Archimond, we need not fear the Night Elves. The Scourge can... Archimond, after 10,000 years, how is it possible? <laughs> the Legion has returned to consume this world, woman. And this time... Your troublesome race will not stop us. Fools! Let her slip away! Find her, damn you! Find her and kill her! The sight of Archimond and his vanguard defiling Ashenville filled Toronto with shock and fury. But she knew it was only the beginning. The Legion was not in Kalimdor to conquer the forests. The demons wanted to consume the entire world. With the second well of eternity, they would have the power to do so. They could open up gateways for the rest of the Legion. Perhaps even for Sargeras himself. And it troubled her that Malfurion and his followers had not yet emerged from the dream. And surely they must have sensed the corruption spreading. The reason for that was Sinaris' death. When he had fallen, a shockwave blew through the dream, weakening the druids, throwing them into a state of confusion. It would be up to her and the sentinels to get them up and running, use the horn of Cenarius, and bring Malfurion back to her side. It has been a thousand years since I last looked upon you, Tyrande. I thought of you every moment I roamed through the Emerald Dream. My heart rejoices to see you again, Furion. But I would not have awakened you unless the need was urgent. That did it, boys! We've driven them off! Let's regroup back at the base and tend to our wounded. 
So, the Outlanders battle against the undead as well. They could prove to be powerful allies against Archimonde and his ilk. They are mongrels and nothing more. They are responsible for Cenarius' death. I will be damned before I stand with them. Perhaps you are right, my love. You've changed, Tyrande. There is little mercy left in you. Long ago I swore to protect this land, Furion. I never had the luxury of sleeping through times of great peril. If your endless vigil has hardened you, my love, it must be part of your goddess's plan. Some have asked in the past why they call him Furion in Warcraft 3, and I believe it's merely a nickname. Now Mel Furion would soon enough find out just how far Tyrande was willing to go to defend their lands. They stumbled across the pathway which led to Illidan's prison. The blessing of immortality, it was great for the elves, but not so much for the luck to betray her. In darkness, he spent his time, magical bonds keeping him chained, unable to even take his own life. His warden, Maiev Shadowsong, made sure that their prisoner wasn't going anywhere, but our high priestess believed that Illidan could be their salvation. Illidan? It's been 10,000 years. Could he still be alive? We should free him, Furion. He would be the perfect ally against the undead and their demon masters. No, Teranda. That beast must never be set free. But he is your brother. Be that as it may. He is far too dangerous. I forbid it. Only the goddess may forbid me anything. I will free Illidan whether you like it or not. Not even the guards left to keep an eye on him could stop Tyrande from pushing forwards. She slaughtered any that stood in her way. While Illidan has had centuries to brood on what he would do to those who had incarcerated him. But all that fell away when he gazed upon his beloved Tyrande. Illidan, is that you? Tyrande, it is your voice. After all these ages spent in darkness... Your voice is like the pure light of the moon upon my mind. The Legion has returned, Illidan. Your people have need of you once more. Because I once cared for you, Tyrande, I will hunt down the demons. But I will never owe our people anything. Then let us hurry back to the surface. The demon's corruption spreads with every second we waste. All his dreams of vengeance, all his plans for retribution, faded away. As if the long years of his imprisonment had never happened. He was astonished by the feeling. He had fought himself hardened against anything and anyone. Especially her, but he'd been wrong. A small voice in the back of his mind. And I don't wonder if she had shown up out of kindness or forgiveness. But all that really happened was that she was unsheathing him, unleashing a weapon against the greater threats. No apologies and no remorse. Fair enough. He would do the work, but he would do it his way. He grabbed the skull of Gul'dan and then struck down Tychondrius while absorbing a whole bunch of power from the artifacts. This transformed him so much that his own twin didn't even recognize him. Foul demon! What have you done with my brother? It is I, Purim. This is what I've become. No! Illidan, how could you? Despite doing what they wanted him to do, the way that he went about it, it was something they weren't down with. So Illidan is banished from their lands, but don't you worry, he'll come back in just a moment. It still left Archimonde to deal with, and luckily, plans were already set in motion by the Guardian Medivh. He brought Frau, Jaina, Tyrande, and Malfurion together to stand in the defense of Azeroth. While their forces delayed Archimonde as long as they could, Malfurion worked on their plan. Ten thousand years ago, we Night Elves defeated the Burning Legion. Though the rest of the world was shattered, we were left free to live out our immortal lives in peace, bound to the World Tree. We are its protectors, and through it we were granted immortality and power over nature. Now, at last, it is time we gave that power back. You realize that we will age as these mortals do. Our powers over nature will wane in time. 
If pride gives us pause, my love, then perhaps we have lived long enough already. I will proceed to the summit and prepare our defenses there. Whatever comes, my love, remember, our bond is eternal. Thousands of defenders died that day, but they did not give their lives in vain. By the time that Archimonde reached Nordrasil, Melfurin and the Druids they had completed their work. Countless, incorporeal spirits known as Wisps. They emerged from the forest around Hyjal, channeling their energies into the World Tree and igniting the enchantments within. Our command was instantly destroyed, with most of his undead and demons. A hard-earned victory over the Legion yet again, but not without a great cost. No longer would the Night Elves enjoy immortality or immunity to sickness. They would grow old and infirm. They would die just like all the other mortal races, but those were concerns for later. As for right now, not all of the threats of the Legion are completely eradicated. Up north, there's still the Lich King, with his Death Knight Arthas doing his bidding. Now while being created by the Legion, the Lich King had no intention to remain loyal. So Kil'jaeden recruited the Betrayer to take care of his wayward servants. In turn, Illidan recruited the Naga. And the Naga are those former highborn elves that were swallowed by the water with the Sundering, willingly joined the old godness offside. With his forces gathered, he then set out to grab enough power to get the job done. Hot on his trail, there was his ward of Mayev, desperate to return her captive to his cage. Her quest was now rather difficult, after all the power-ups and artifacts boosted Illidan had. One of her forces rushed out to recruit the aid of Malfurion. I will go. I will lead the sentinels there myself. No, my love. The druids and I can handle. I am the one who set him free. The responsibility is mine. Then we shall both go. If this girl's tale is true, Maiev will need all the help she can get. In noon be praised. I knew you would come, Shando Stormrage. I'm glad we reached you in time, Maiev. Priestess Taronda. I'm surprised you came in person. Are you here to absolve your guilty conscience? I did what I had to do, Maya. You are in no position to judge me. What you did was murder my Watchers and set the Betrayer free. It is you who should be locked in a cage. Stop this, both of you! We're not out of danger yet! Even back when, Maya and Toronto were not exactly close. When she was appointed to become the new High Priestess and then got kidnapped, Maiev mourned her loss, but also commented that she feared her inexperience had betrayed her. Perhaps it would have been better for her if her predecessor had chosen one more seasons, with a subtle implication that Maiev referred to herself. Tyrande now has 10,000 years of experience, and yet she still went against everything that Maiev had worked for. She had her reasons and trusted in Illidan. But perhaps the trust was misplaced. I was wrong to set you free, Illidan. I can see that now. You've become a monster. Monster? Is that what you think of me? I have always cared for you, Tyrande. I sought only to prove my worthiness, my power. Raw power is no substitute for true strength, Illidan. That is why I chose your brother over you. The betrayer managed to escape their grasp and set sail all the way to Lordaeron. That's where he worked on a spell of destroying the Lich King from afar. Magic that did so much damage that it wouldn't just destroy the frozen throne, it would split apart the roof of the world. No fury sensed this, while my and Tyrande, they continued their hunt, ultimately running into Kilfa's Sunstrider. Descendant of Duframar Sunstrider, again those highborn that were exiled for not being able to let go of their magics. They had formed Quelphalus, their Sunwell, and evolved into the High Elves, eventually the Blood Elves. And despite Maya's protests, Toronto wanted to help their former brethren. Wait, we have no time for this. Perhaps once your people are safe, you will help us hunt the demon we seek. It would be an honor, my lady. We've driven them back. But the second wave is advancing. We've run out of time. The caravan will not survive another assault. Kale, get your caravan moving across the river. I will stay behind and hold the bridge. That's very noble of you, Priestess. But you're no match for a force that vast. The goddess is my shield, Warden. A loon will grant me the strength.
working. She's holding them back. You must be us. We must hurry to save her. That current will take her straight into the heart of the undead lands. No, Kale. Taronda is a soldier. She knew the risks she took. We have a greater mission to accomplish now, and our time grows short. Your people are now safe. You will uphold your end of the bargain and help me hunt the demon I seek. Taronda was left to her fate, while Maya focused on one thing and one thing only. She even lied to Malfurion, told him that Taronda was torn apart rather than swept away by the river. That lie would cost her dearly when they finally did get to Illidan, stopped the spell work, and captured her targets. Fools! Can you not see? The spell we channeled was meant to strike at the undead! Our common enemy! My mission was to destroy the Lich King's stronghold of Ice Crown. And no heed to the cost! Because of you, Taranda is dead! What? Your pardon, Lord Stormrage, but the priestess may still be alive. She was swept down river, but it's premature to simply assume Silence, that... Kale. You told me she was torn apart. You lied to me. The betrayer's capture was our primary concern, Shondo. I needed your help. I knew you would go to her, and we would lose our chance. I... Just who is the betrayer now, woman? I must go to her immediately. Believe me, brother. Despite all our differences, you know that I would never lead Tyrande to harm. Let me help you. My Naga can scour the river for us. Let me do this, at least. Very well. What? After all he's done? You would trust this traitor? Silence! I will deal with you later. Let's go, brother. Illidan, what trickery is this? Have you come to finish me off personally? No, Tyrande. You must believe me. I've come to save you. Save me? You risked your life for me. I don't understand. Whatever I may be, whatever I may become in this world, know that I will always look out for you, Tyrande. Tyrande! I knew you would not forsake me. I thought I'd lost you forever, my love. If not for Illidan's aid, I may well have. We have had much strife between us, my brother. I have known only ages of hate for you. But for my part, I wish it to end. From this day forward, let there be peace between us. You have brought much suffering to the world, Illidan. For that, you can never be forgiven. However, you saved the life of my love. For that, I will let you go. But should you ever threaten my people again? I understand, brother. Lordship over this world was never my aim. Only power. Only the magic. I've lingered here too long. I must go. By aiding you, I've betrayed my new master. If I am not careful, his wrath will be my end. Farewell, brother. Tyrande. I doubt our paths will cross again. In Shufalana. Fools! Have you no sense of justice? Maev! Illidan has atoned for his crimes. He is no longer a threat to- It's no use, Tyrande. She has become vengeance itself. Bound forever to the hunt. Pray that in her zeal she doesn't cause even more havoc than Illidan. Now, let's go home, beloved. We've earned our rest. This would indeed be the last time that the paths crossed again. Tyrande and Malfurion returned home, but what home exactly? As Nordrasil, it was just recently blown up, would still take many years to heal back up. One of Malfurion's fellow druids, Archdruid Fendral Steckhelm, he came up with a solution. He'd been experimenting before with planting happy little world trees from branches of Nordrasil. Now those experiments, they might have horribly failed in the past, but don't you worry about it. Stackhelm got this now. He learned from his mistakes. All the same, Malfurion did not approve. 
And that was a problem. Because in Stackhelm's mind, a new world tree, it would lead to the potential of bringing back his son, a son that had died during the War of the Shifting Sands. That mindset was being fueled by an ancient old enemy, Xavius. The same Xavius that was turned into a tree by Malfurion. Like the Naga, he too got in touch with the old gods when that whole sundering took place. Rooted deeply in both the physical world and the Emerald Dream, Xavius had become known as the Nightmare Lord, spreading the corruption of the Emerald Nightmare as much as he could. Now he had manipulated Stackhelm to his side, who ambushed Malfurion as he slept in his barrow den, placing their leader in a deep coma. Stackhelm then took control of the Scenarian Circle and led them to the coastal region of Darkshore, where they joined together to plant their new world tree. The druids named it Teldrassil, or Crown of the Earth. In their new home, it was bright, powerful, and apparently uncorrupted. I have vision that she lacks. Brimming with hope, the Night Elves established their city of their Nessus amongst the World Tree's massive boughs. Unfortunately, Fendril's decision to create the tree without the Dragon Aspect's help, it proved to be a terrible mistake. Without their blessing, Teldrassil was vulnerable to the dark influences of the Emerald Nightmare. From the heart of the Emerald Dream, the Nightmare reached out to the tree. Before long, it seeped into the World Tree's essence. Tyrande and the rest of them were unaware of these developments. They were kept busy with other threats to notice. Not even Malfurion's long slumber was that much reason for concern, as the Archdruids had taken long naps before. The High Priestess was of course troubled by Malfurion's disappearance, yet nevertheless she strived to keep the Night Elves from reliving the mistakes of the past. My heart sleeps in the Emerald Dream. Which brings us to classic World of Warcraft and the events beyond. But that's a story we'll save for next time. So for now, thank you very much for watching everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos. Leave a like if you enjoyed this one. And until next time. See ya!